Hello, my name is Nate. Welcome to my art channel. I am going to do another pearl pour tonight, specifically a dumpling swirl that is in the style of Dwight from Dwight Pours. Um, this is a different kind of pearl pour. I, I realized from my last video, I got several questions uh, about how this works, and maybe I didn't explain that well enough, so I'm going to take a little time and uh, explain why this works a little bit better. <coughs> But first, let me uh, explain my colors, to tell you about my colors. So, um, my pour over color is um, Artist Loft Soft Body White and US Floetrol and Water only. So just those three ingredients. It's three and a half parts Floetrol to one part paint, and then enough water to thin it down until it gets to a very thin consistency. On my last video, I did one, and I made sure that the paints were thin enough that when it drizzled off of the stick, it indented like that, rather than leaving a small mound. And I lost a lot of the cell definition, so I'm thickening up the paints just a little bit this time, so it does leave a little bit of a mound like this. All of my paints are the same consistency. Um, and then I have four deco art colors. So this one is deco art dazzling metallics emperor's gold uh, this one is uh, deco art dazzling metallics bright copper and then these two are deco art extreme sheens this one is pewter which is besides 24 karat gold this is probably my favorite metallic color to use i love this color um, and the deco art extreme sheen pearl um, so all of these metallic paints um, Deco art is um, a craft paint. It's not a high quality paint, so it doesn't have really, really strong binders in it, and neither does Floetrol. And what makes them metallic are the mica flakes, which are very, very light, and they want to rise um, and float to the top. In fact, mica flakes are lighter than water, so they do float. So um, by thinning these down to a thin consistency, um, and pour in putting these down on the canvas first and then pouring this uh, white paint that is also a thin consistency on top of it those mica flakes want to rise up through this paint and float on top and when they do they bring the color up with them and because water likes round shapes rather than squares they come up as cells so there are lots of there are plenty of other pearl techniques um, and uh, the difference between this technique and some of the other pearl techniques, like you would see Sarah Taylor or uh, Tara from Pieces of Tara Artistry, they put their, they make a pearl mix with very specific ingredients, put that down on the canvas first, and then pour the other colors on top, and it creates pearls in that way also because of those special ingredients. This is just paint, Floetrol, and water. So, um, <coughs> it is... A much easier and much more accessible way of making pearls but I find that this technique has very limited options on composition whereas the other uh, style of, uh, of uh, pearl pours has a lot more room to play with so but this is a really fun technique to do because it's kind of like magic watching those pearl cells appear and I've been trying to work on my skills of working with neutral color palettes. So I think this is a perfect technique to do this. I'm going to uh, put down my dish strainer in the center of the canvas and I'm gonna pour these colors in one at a time uh, and they will come out and make an interesting pattern. And then I will use this paint and pour directly over top of that, tilt it out very quickly, and then I'll put it on time-lapse so you can see the, hopefully we'll keep our fingers crossed that we, we will get the, um, the pearl cells appear, and we should be able to tell fairly quickly whether my cons where I got, whether I got the consistency correct. The consistency with this technique is the key, and I was very close on the last one, but I went a little too thin, so I've gone a little thicker this time. Let's hope that helps. So, I'm going to pour my, get my, strainer here somewhere close to the center. It's, I'm not going for a, a very symmetrical look here, so it doesn't, hey, I can put it right here, it doesn't really matter, but I'm just used to working in the middle, so I'll continue with that. 
Um, so now we have to decide which order to do this in. So I have two warm colors and I have two cool colors. Um, I like strong, strong contrast. And since this is my favorite of the four, I'm going to use that one first. Um, and what happens here, the theory here is that whatever, when it comes out uh, through the strainer, there'll be some blending, but whatever hits the, whatever color hits the canvas, that's the color of cell, that should, pearl cell that should appear in that location. So um, if I put the pearl in first, or the, the pewter in first, it should have pewter in the center of the composition. So I'm going to go with that first. And I think I will go with the two co uh, uh, cool colors together. These two have the strongest contrast, so I'm going to put them together. And then I'll put this on last. And yeah, I think those two colors go together too. So if I ended up doing more than one layer, then it should work out. So let's keep them on the table in that order so I don't forget what I'm doing. <laughs> and I'm going to put on some music for you while I play. Beneath the shadows of this quiet town I see you there, your feathers on the the world was in a life you never could offer even if you never flown before you can take a chance and try once more don't let your worries weigh you can still take flight Although you're earthbound
Okay, this has been about 20 minutes and already I can see it's not, the cells aren't developing quite as fast as they did with the other one. I'm taking that as a good sign because uh, last time I had almost no negative space left and I do want some in this, but I still want, I'm still hoping that these cells continue forming. There's lots of smaller ones that I see trying to make their way up. You can look at that whole section right there. I think that's going to continue developing. So I'm going to turn off the lights and be patient <laughs> and wait until morning. I don't know why I'm lying to myself. I'm going to check this in an hour at, at least. Um, <laughs> I can't wait till morning. I'll have to check on it a couple of times. The cells that I'm seeing are beautiful and very well shaped, multicolored. Um, so I'm really happy about that. These ones with the little halo around them are really cool. I love that. Look at that. That's super cool. Um, and you know, there's lots of them on the outside edge, but the center is still a lot of negative space. It's cool though, isn't it? Okay, so let's see how this dries. Okay, this is the next morning. My sides and edges are already dry. In fact, these sides are gorgeous. I love that. These colors are fantastic together. Um, and, you know, last time I got too many pearls, and this time I did not get enough. And the ones that I got are kind of weird. Not gonna lie. And this one, there's one giant one here in the middle that has, like, all of the colors in it but it's so weirdly shaped. I'm not sure what's happening, but uh, I for sure get to try this again so I can try and get it right. <laughs> but I also noticed that this time I used very earthy colors and um, the last one was very aquatic. So it gives me an idea of a project I can do uh, with both of these canvases to complement each other. I have an idea. So hopefully I'll have that ready for you for uh, my video on Sunday. So tune in and check that out. And um, yes, thank you very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like this video and go make, some, go mix up some paints and be fearless.